Live from the Opera House, it's story time with your host, Ben Whiting. Hi, friends, and welcome to Live from the City Opera House, it's story time. I'm your host, Ben Whiting, and on this show every week, we have a great story read by a special guest and then have a fun activity that you can participate in right from home. I'll tell you the supplies you need for today's episode in a little bit, but if you'd like to know the supplies for future activities on future episodes, you can visit us online or on social media to download activity sheets for every episode, past, present, and future. Now, we all know when we have friends who help us, it's important to thank them. And we want to thank some friends who've made this show possible. Traverse City Area Public Schools, Newton's Road, Tattle, the Traverse City Opera House, and of course, our series underwriting sponsor, Bell Tire. Thank you so much from the bottom of our heart, because this show would not be possible without your support and your contributions. Now, on to today's book. For today's book, we're going to be traveling down south to the city of New Orleans, a wonderful city with a vibrant musical scene and culture. And, of course, today's hero is a musical prodigy which means he excels at musical abilities. He actually had his own band by the age of six. And today's story is all about him overcoming obstacles to achieve his dream of playing at the New Orleans City Jazz Festival. Now, since we're going to be reading a book about music, it only makes sense that we should have our own musical instruments. And that is what today's activity is all about. The supplies you're going to need for today's activity include two jumbo craft sticks, a wide rubber band, two small rubber bands, a straw, and some scissors. If you don't have these supplies readily available, that's okay. Go ahead and watch the rest of the episode, and you can watch again later on demand when you have all the supplies ready. Now, since today's book and activity involve music, we can't think of anyone to have as our special guest reader than Peter Deneen. He's the band instructor at East Middle School, and he plays the bagpipes for the Grand Traverse Pipes and Drums. Look for him all around the region, playing at a lot of great events and creating some really great music. And with that, take it away, Mr. Deneen. Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Deneen, and I'm here at the Opera House here in Traverse City, and going to be sharing a book with you in a few, mo a few moments. Um, I've lived in Traverse City for 36 years. And over those years, I have been involved in many, many musical events here in Traverse City. Now, I'm band director at East Middle School here in Traverse City. And I'm also a bagpiper and play in the uh, Grand Traverse Pipes and Drums. In fact, if I was wearing a kilt today and had a set of bagpipes over my arm, you might even recognize me because I've been in cherry festival parades and I've played at the pavilions here in Traverse City. And um, happy to be with you to share a book about one of my favorite musicians, Trombone Shorty. Trombone Shorty wrote this book with some help from Brian Collier, who is a fantastic visual artist, a wonderful painter, and you'll be seeing his work as I'm reading this book to you. Where are you at? Where are you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans and our own way of talking too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So where are you at? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of, of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, Let's start at the beginning because this is a story about music. But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my great inspiration. You see, I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme. Any time of day or night, you could hear music floating in the air. And there was music in my house too. My big brother, James, played the trumpet so loud you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band too. Follow me, James would say. Now there's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets, and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air to the crowd. I love the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, 
saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba, which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where are you at? Where are you at? The musicians would call. All day long, I could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I loved these parades during Mardi, Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all these sounds and mixed them together, just like how we make our food. We take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen, and stir it all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever tried. Now we call it gumbo, and that's what I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians of Treme. We were making music, and that's all that mattered. Then one day, I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally, with a real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. The next time the parade went by my house, I grabbed that trombone and headed out into the street. My brother James noticed me playing along and smiled proudly. Trombone shorty, he called out, because the instrument was twice my size. Where are you at? From that day on, everyone called me trombone shorty. I took that trombone everywhere I went and never stopped playing. I was so small that sometimes I fight, fell right over to the ground because it was so heavy. But I always got back up and I learned to hold it up high. I listened to my brother play songs over and over and I taught myself those songs too. I practiced day and night and sometimes I fell asleep with my trombone in my hands. One day, my mom surprised me with tickets to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the best and biggest music festival in town. We went to see Bo Diddley, who my mom said was one of the most important musicians of all time. As we watched him on stage, I raised my trombone to my lips and started to play along. He stopped his band in the middle of a song and asked the crowd, who's that playing out there? Everyone started pointing, but Bo Diddley couldn't see me because I was the smallest one in the place. So my mom held me up in the air and said, that's my son, Trombone Shorty. Well, Trombone Shorty, come on up here, Bo Diddley said. The crowd passed me overhead until I was standing on the stage next to Bo Diddley himself. I walked right up to the microphone and held my trombone high up in the air, ready to blow. What do you want to play? Bo Diddley asked. Follow me, I said. After I played with Bo Diddley, I knew I was ready to have my own band. I got my friends together and we called ourselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time we went out to play each day after finishing our homework. We played all around New Orleans. I practiced and practiced, and soon my brother James asked me to join his band. When people wondered who the kid in his band was, he'd proudly say, that's my little brother, Trombone Shorty, where are you at? And now I have my own band called Trombone Shorty and Orleans Avenue, named after a street in Treme. I've played all around the world, but I always come back to New Orleans. And when I'm home, I make sure to keep my eyes on the younger musicians in town and help them out, 
just like my brother did for me. Today, I play at the same New Orleans Jazz Festival where I played once with Bo Diddley. And when the performance ends, I lead a parade of musicians around, just like I used to do in the streets of Treme with my friends. Where are you at? Where are you at? I still keep my trombone in my hands, and I will never let it go. Thanks for sharing this time with me, everybody. Thanks for sharing in this wonderful story about Trombone Shorty, one of my favorite musicians. Thank you so much, Mr. Dean, for that fantastic reading of the story. Now we're actually going to do something a little different today because Mr. Deneen is also going to be walking us through today's activity and showing us how to make our very own musical instruments. Take it away, Mr. Deneen. Hi, everybody. The book Trombone Shorty. One of the fun things I love about that book is the fact that Trombone Shorty and his friends initially didn't have any instruments. And so they used things around them to make instruments so that they could start their own band. And it wasn't until Trombone Shorty found that old beaten up trombone that he started playing trombone. So before Trombone Shorty became Trombone Shorty, he was playing on a homemade harmonica of sorts. And we've got a couple of examples right here. And I'm gonna show you how to make some. All you'll need are some rubber bands preferably a few that are really big. Here's a real big one right here, the purple one. We've got some long ones here, and then just some regular sized trom um, rubber bands. You're also gonna need some craft sticks. These are sticks that you'd probably get out of a popsicle. If it's possible to get larger ones, I think you'll have a lot more success. Now, these, <clears throat> I believe, are some rather much larger craft sticks, and they almost look like the kind of sticks that you would use to stir paint. So if you have popsicle sticks, that's good. If you have something bigger like this, I think that's gonna work pretty well also. You're also gonna need a pair of scissors and some straws. These happen to be fancy colors, but if you don't have fancy colors, any old straw will do. So let's see what we got. The first thing you'll wanna do is take one of your craft sticks. I'm gonna use this large one so you can see it really well. And take one of the larger rubber bands and stretch it all the way uh, over the stick like that. You wanna make sure it's centered on the stick so it doesn't fly away on you. All right, then <clears throat> take one of your straws. Hmm, now I've got a real a real conundrum here. What color am I gonna pick? These are all kind of trombone shorty colors. I think I'll go with green so that you can see it, contrasting against the red on the table. Cut a section, maybe a couple inches worth, and then use that section that you cut. Oops, there goes my poster. <laughs> use that section that you cut to cut another section that's about the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect, so don't worry about that. Set one of those little sections aside, and then put the other section underneath the rubber band so it's a good distance away from the end. Then take the other craft stick and put it on there like such, take one of the smaller rubber bands, wrap it around. Now you see it doesn't actually fit on the end, so I'm gonna wrap it around a few times. Let's see. Yeah, now we've got kind of a little duck bill. Quack, quack, quack. Now, <clears throat> it's time for the other piece of straw. Now, this is where it's very important. You could put it under the rubber band, but what we're actually gonna do is put this other one on top of the rubber band. Now this is kind of easy because you can see it's propped open there. So if we just slide that in there a few inches and then squeeze it down, 
Uh, there we go. Then take another rubber band, wrap it around a bunch of times. Do one more. And I think we should be good to go. So <clears throat> let's see how this works. If you just put your mouth over it and blow through, we just might get a sound. There it is. <laughs> now, I'm wondering if we can experiment a little bit. What if we blow harder? Sounds to me like a higher note, doesn't it? So if we blow real gentle, it's a low pitch. What happens if we blow harder and harder and harder and harder? Wow, it goes really high. What if we blow super hard? And then, of course, we're ready for business now. We can play all kinds of fun songs. I wonder if there's a song that might remind you and me of New Orleans. It works for me. That was great. I was a little worried that it wasn't gonna work at first. Trombone Shorty and his buddies probably weren't so sure that their homemade instruments were gonna work, but what do you know? A little bit of thing, a few things from laying around the house and a little bit of creativity and you're good to go. Now, I've got another one that's a lot smaller. This one we made with popsicle sticks. The process is exactly the same. You start with your popsicle sticks, you stretch a rubber band over one, you got your pieces of straw cut, you squeeze them in there, and when you're done, I'm wondering just how this one will work. Interesting, eh? So a little bit of creativity, a few things laying around the house, and you are making music with your friends, just like Trombone Shorty. Have fun, get creative, and enjoy yourselves. Mr. Vanine, thank you so much for walking us through today's activity. That was so much fun. And also, thank you for reading today's story. We also want to thank one more time our sponsors, but most of all, we want to thank you for tuning in. The show absolutely would not be possible without your viewership. But we're not done yet because we want to see the instruments that you created. So take a photo of your harmonica and email it with your name, age, a description of the project to info at tcaps.net with your parents' permission, of course. My name is Ben Whiting, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Live from the City Opera House. It's story time. You can join us every Wednesday at 9 a.m., or if you want to see past episodes, please visit tcaps247.com, and you can see every episode on demand. Until next time, my name is still Ben Whiting, and I hope you stay safe, continue to have fun, and continue to keep learning.